Hi guys, welcome back. So today I have a dupes video for you. It's been a little while since my last one because I really like to test out all of my products before actually coming on here and letting you guys know that they're dupes. So I've tested all of these out and they are amazing. I definitely feel like a lot of these are spot on. There are a couple of like differences as far as like colors and stuff, but like formulas and just the longevity of these products compared to the high end ones, they're like on point. So I hope this video is helpful for some of you guys. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. I haven't started editing this video but I already know it's probably 20 minutes long so I'm sorry grab a snack so I hope you enjoy and let's just go ahead and get started all right guys so starting off with a fresh face first thing is first in all of my makeup tutorials every time I do my makeup especially on camera I have to always moisturize I'm using my favorite night balm literally from Bath and Body Works if you don't have this you need it in your life these are amazing this is like all that I use for my lips like ever so don't want you guys looking at dry lips in the video. All right, so I'm gonna be doing the drugstore side on my right side, which is gonna be your left, and then the high-end side on my left side, which is gonna be your right. All right, so let's start off with the brows. First, I have the Anastasia Brow Definer, and a dupe that I have for this is literally identical. This is the Wet n Wild Retractable Brow Pencil. So in the Anastasia one, I am in the shade medium brown. In the Wet n Wild one, I currently have the shade dark brown, but I am also in the shade medium brown as well. I just picked up both because I wasn't sure which one was going to match me better. They both match me really well, so yeah. Dark brown, medium brown, that's typically what I go for in my brow products. So basically what I'm going to do is just go ahead and outline my eyebrows. I always like to do this because I feel like it gives me a nice framework for the rest of my brows. The Wet n Wild pencil is just so creamy. It just glides on. I love the formula. It's not waxy. It's just literally identical to the Anastasia one. The Anastasia one is nice. The only thing that I don't like about it and that I've experienced a lot of issues with this pencil in the past is that the actual brow pencil would keep coming out. Like it would literally fall out. And I purchased this like a few years ago, like two or three times and it happened to me every single time. So that's why I stopped using it for a little while, but it is a good brow pencil. But the Wet n Wild one is definitely a super great spot on alternative. But I like them both. But honestly, if I had to choose, definitely go with the one odd one. All right, to fill in the rest of my brows, I always love going in with a pomade. It just works really well with my brows personally. I love the Anastasia Dip Brow. I have this one in the shade Medium Brown, but a really great alternative, and I've actually shown a dupe for this in the past as well. There's so many good alternatives to the Anastasia one if you don't want to spend all that money. One of my all-time favorites is the NYX Tame and Frame Tinted Brow Pomade. This is incredible. I love the formula of this. It's just a really nice, very similar formula to the Anastasia one, so this is amazing, and you can see I've like used mine so much. I just added a little bit of oil to it, like baby oil, because it was getting a little dry, and that's what I do with all my pomades once they start drying up. Just a little drop, and then I just take a Q-tip and kind of like swirl it around in there just to get it a little bit more, you know, damp. So in the next one, I am in the shade Espresso. So I'm just going to use an angled brow brush from e.l.f. to fill in the drugstore side. And I, again, just follow along with the natural shape of my brows. And then for the other side, of course, I'm going to be using another angled brush. This one is from Royal and Lang Nickel, and I'm just going to fill in the rest of my brows. Okay, so I did carve my brows out a little bit, and I also did prime my lids with my NARS Soft Matte Concealer in the shade Custard. I love this concealer. Another really good alternative for priming your lids and carving out your brows is the NYX Full Coverage Concealer. You guys know I'm obsessed with that as well. And today for eyeshadow, I have a dupe that has been going around, and I'm going to be testing them side by side today. I have the Modern Renaissance Palette and the Wet n Wild Rose A, I think it's rosé rosé in the air eyeshadow palette this palette is literally five dollars and you guys know like my obsession with wet and wild is real their eyeshadows are incredible probably the best at the drugstore that i've ever tried and the most affordable so i don't know how they do it like great quality great prices but they do it and they do it really well and this eyeshadow palette is literally a dupe for the modern renaissance i have tried the wet and wild out and i absolutely adore the palette it is beautiful what i'm going to do actually is just start off with the cream shade in the wet and wild palette and it's this one right here. And this one is identical to Tempera from the Modern Renaissance palette. And I'm just gonna use that to set my lid. I know that it's like a new trend to not set your lids, but I feel like I have to. Then of course, I'm gonna use the shade Tempera, which I barely have any left. As you can see, I'm like scraping off the corners. So I'm starting off with this transition color right in here in the Wet n Wild palette. This reminds me a lot of Burnt Orange or Raw Sienna from the Anastasia palette. So I'm going to take this on a big blending brush. This one is the NYX blending brush, which I love. And I'm just going to start 
blending that shade right into the crease. Let's zoom in. Up close and personal now. I'm really gonna build this shade up. You can see just how smooth it goes on. Like it is just crazy how affordable this is. And I purchased all of the new Wet n Wild stuff online when it like first launched, but I'm pretty sure it should be in stores by now. Um, like Walmart, Target, so definitely be on the lookout because this palette is everything. All right, so then I'm gonna be going into the Modern Renaissance palette on a different blending brush. This one's from Wet n Wild. I'm gonna take Burnt Orange and Raw Sienna. I'm gonna mix the two. I'm gonna also apply these shades right into the crease. To deepen up the crease a little bit, I'm using a Morphe M441. In the Wet n Wild palette, I'm picking up the orange color, which I love. You guys know I'm obsessed with orange shades. I'm going to just start applying that right into my crease. On the outer part of my crease. Again, I'm building these shades up. I want them pretty intense. Then with a Morphe M518, I'm going to pick up the shade Railgar in the Anastasia palette. It's literally identical, you guys. Like, oh my gosh. Can you guys see that? It's the same color. With the same brushes that I was just using, I'm gonna take my washcloth. I always keep little washcloths with me when I do my makeup. I'm gonna just take my brush and kind of just clean it off it here, and I'm gonna use the same brush, and I'm gonna pick up the like really pretty magenta color in here. You can see it's super pigmented. And I'm gonna also apply that shade where I just applied the orange color. And that shade that I just used is literally the, identical to the shade Love Letter in the Anastasia palette. It is spot on, same thing. <laughs> So I think what I want to do is do like a half cut crease type of thing. Never tried this before, but we're going to try it today. So what I'm going to do is just cut my crease halfway and I'm going to just use my NARS Soft Matte Concealer for both sides. And by the way, I'm just using a flat shader brush from ColourPop to do this. All right, with that same flat shader brush, I'm just wiping it away on a makeup remover wipe. I'm gonna pick up this shimmery champagne cream color right in the Wet n Wild palette and just pack that on where I applied the concealer. And then for the other side, I'm using an Urban Decay flat shader brush and I'm picking up the shade Primavera. The one from Wet n Wild is slightly darker than the Primavera shade from the Anastasia palette, but it's very similar. I'm going to blend out those edges, and to do that on this side, I'm going to use an e.l.f. contour brush for the eyes, and what I'm going to do is just blend out those edges, and I'm going to actually pick up a little bit more of orange color right in here, and I'm going to mix it with the magenta shade, and I'm going to kind of just... And that, you know what? I don't want to use this brush. Let's use a different brush. I'm going to use this blending brush. This one is from BH Cosmetics. And I'm just going to take, again, those two same colors. I'm probably going to add the shimmery color again just to really emphasize it. Uh, this didn't really turn out the way that I wanted it to, the way that I envisioned, but that's okay. I feel like I didn't even need to do all that concealer because it just it didn't turn out like what I had envisioned. All right, for the other side, I'm using a Morphe E22 brush. Again, I'm going to be using Love Letter and Railgar. All right, yeah, this one is a little bit lighter, but honestly, I don't really think it's, it's like super noticeable. I mean, you guys are going to let me know down below, I'm sure. But um, I mean, looking at myself right now, I feel like unless you're actually staring into my eyes, I don't really think you can like see that much of a difference but both colors are super super similar all right so for the wet and wild side i'm going to use a really tiny brush the e36 from morphe and i'm going to take the cream color right in here 
I'm gonna just apply that right onto my brow bone. And then I'm taking a P10 brush from Wet n Wild, <laughs> and I'm gonna be taking the Tempera shade, scraping off the edges and applying that to my brow bone. This one's a little bit more pigmented than the Wet n Wild one, but very similar. Okay, for lashes, for the high-end ones, I have the Tarte Tardis Pro Lashes, and these are in the style Flirt. I really like Tarte Lashes. They're not super expensive. They're definitely under $20. They're like, even under $15, I think. I think these are only like $12 or $13. And if you don't want to spend that much money on lashes, these from e.l.f. are really nice. They don't have a style or anything. It just says Luxe Lash Kit winged and polished maybe that's the style but they have a ton of different ones in like this black packaging they're super affordable you can get them at target at walmart online and i love elf so i'm just gonna go ahead and pop these on all right lashes are on and to be honest the only major difference that i see with the tart ones versus the elf is that the tart ones are slightly longer but they have that similar wispy effect they're not too thick and dramatic they're really really pretty lashes and let me just say that both of my eyes are different I have two different eye shapes this one is more of like a football shaped eye and this one is more almond shape and it's like more open so sometimes even when I wear lashes that are the same they look different because of my eye shapes so just a little FYI but yes these are a great alternative the elf ones to the tart ones if you don't want to spend more than ten dollars on a pack of lashes so yeah moving on to the skin I have two primers the first one is the milk makeup blurring stick I really like this because it does give you like that really smooth soft effect to your skin. A dupe that I have found for this recently, I'm really impressed with this, is the Milani Instant Touch Up Blur Stick. I picked this up online. I'm not really sure if the new Milani makeup is sold in stores yet, but I'm obsessed with a lot of the new stuff that they've recently came out with, so this is a great alternative if you don't want to spend, I don't even know how much the milk one is. It's really pricey. If you don't want to spend however much this milk one is, definitely check out the Milani one. It's great, and it gives you the same effect. So the Milani one literally looks like a glue stick. <laughs> But what I like to do is kind of just apply it where I feel like I need it the most. Which is on like the bottom portion of my face. This is not going to mattify your skin. This is just going to kind of give you like that smooth appearance to your face. But it does not mattify. So if you have severely oily skin, I recommend using this in combination with like a mattifying primer. I have combo skin and it works really well. With any extra product, I will just apply it like in between my brows. And then I do the same thing with the milk one as well. It looks like this like a fatter glue stick. <laughs> but I really like it. It really does smooth my face out for me. I know a lot of people say this doesn't work, but I personally think that it makes a difference. So one of my current favorite higher end foundations has been the Bare Minerals Bare Pro foundation. I don't know what it is about this. I love it. It gives me a really natural, healthy glow to the skin. It's not overly dewy and it doesn't have glitter or anything in it, but it just gives your skin just a beautiful, healthy glow from within. And mine is in the shade 18 Pecan, Pecan, however you like to say it. The dupe that I have found for that foundation is the CoverGirl Healthy Elixir Foundation. This foundation is beautiful. It was one of my go-tos in the summer. I use it every once in a while and I've recently started using it again. I just got a new shade. Actually, um, I have buff beige and I forgot how much I love this foundation and just everything about it is great. It has like that beautiful natural glow from within just like the Bare Minerals one and I love the way the CoverGirl one smells to be honest. It has like this really fresh like soap smell like it smells amazing. So what I'm going to do is just apply the CoverGirl one with this foundation brush from Koki Cosmetics which you can get at Walmart and this one's the 618 brush. I'm just going to buff this into the skin. I know it looks really light on me right now, but this foundation does oxidize a little bit. Nothing crazy, but I would definitely recommend going like down a shade in this foundation. Oh my gosh, it smells so good. And also, both foundations have great coverage. Medium to full. And it just looks so good, like even after multiple hours of wearing it. And then for the Bare mineral side, I'm using a Morphe M439. The shades are going to be different. But this one, like I said, it does oxidize a little bit and it'll match perfectly. The Bare Minerals one, by the way, does not oxidize. It's like perfect. I love the shade on me. I think it matches really well. And I found mine at Ulta. They both give me that same effect. I don't know if you can really tell. Do you see how like it looks glowy? but it's still not like excessive. Like I don't look like a grease ball. All right, now for concealer, you guys have been 
waiting so long and so patiently for me to show you guys these side by side so i have the tarte shape tape of course i have mine in the shade light medium and i have my ulta beauty full coverage concealer this is incredible so it's so funny because light medium and tarte shape tape matches me perfectly and in the ulta beauty concealer i like to mix two shades to get my perfect shade because i feel like I need a shade in between both of these. So I have medium warm and light warm. Medium warm for me is perfect when I'm a little bit more tan. And then light warm is just a little too light for me right now. So I need something in between. So that's what I like to do typically is kind of layer both of them. But I'm going to just start off with Tarte Shape Tape. I will say the Tarte Shape Tape, obviously you guys know it is some heavy duty coverage. And I love this concealer. But... It is a little thicker, obviously. It's super full coverage. The Ulta Beauty Concealer is very full coverage. I love this one, but it's a little less thick. It has like this amazing creamy formula. I don't know what it is about it. I just, I love it. I love everything about this concealer. So I like to apply it just like that. I see it's a little too light right now. That's why right now I would go a little bit more with the a medium warm shade to kind of balance it out and you know what I'm just gonna do it because I don't want my face to look too light and let me do a little bit more of this just to kind of make it even now I have a little sponge dupe as well you guys know beauty blenders have just evolved over the days I feel like you don't even need to buy an expensive beauty sponge or beauty blender anymore so I love the LA girl pink beauty sponge this is amazing this was actually sent to me in a PR package if I can find it for you guys I'll link it down below I'm pretty sure you can get it on their website um, I'm not sure if it's sold in stores. I haven't seen it, but it's an amazing sponge. I love how big and squishy it is, and I love how it has that angle on the side. This is a really great alternative to the new Tarte sponge. I think this is called the Duty Sponge or something like that. But you can see it's a lot smaller than the LA Girl one. It has that same shape, literally identical. But the LA Girl one I like better because it's a little bit bigger and because it's squishier. So if you're looking for a good alternative to a beauty blender or like this Tarte sponge, definitely check out LA Girl. Maybelline also has a really good one as well, so... I'm just going to blend this concealer out. I love the angled edge to it because it makes blending out your under eye concealer so easy. Okay. Are you seeing that coverage? It's amazing. Other than the fact that like the color is like slightly different from both, I personally think that the Ulta Beauty Full Coverage Concealer is the best dupe that I have found for the Tarte Shape Tape. I know everyone's going crazy over the Makeup Revolution one. Personally, I don't think that's an exact dupe. I think the Ulta Beauty one is on point. And by the way, the fact that I layered like both of them, the shades together, you don't have to do that to get the full coverage. I just do that to get like my perfect shade, but like realistically, you don't have to layer this concealer so much to get it to be full coverage. Just a little FYI. So moving into powder, one of my favorite high-end powders is the Too Faced Born This Way Ethereal Setting Powder. It's really brightening, but it's still super soft underneath the eyes and it doesn't dry out my under eye, which I really like. A dupe that I have found, this isn't like drugstore. You can find this at Sally's Beauty Supply. It's still a little pricey but it's half the price of the Too Faced one but it's the collab set the stage ultra fine loose setting powder if you've been watching me for a little while you know that I've been using this non-stop this powder is amazing I like it better I think more than the Too Faced one just because of how soft and like airbrush it makes your under eye area look I'm just obsessed with it so if you can't find the collab one if you don't have a Sally's near you or if you just don't want to spend $15 on another powder I, I feel you it's okay I will tell you it is worth it though 100% but I have two other alternatives for you guys so the makeup revolution luxury baking powder in the shade lace I also really like the banana powder as well this is a good alternative to the Too Faced one and another really awesome alternative is the Maybelline fit me loose finishing powder I'm actually in the shade 20 I know this one says 15 but 20 is like my perfect shade and this is an awesome smooth beautiful setting powder for underneath your eyes so those are some other options in case you don't want the collab one or you can't get your hands on it my favorite way to set underneath my eyes is with my sponge it just gives me the most I found at least flawless look so I know the powder looks really white when you first apply it but once you blend it in it is amazing and um, this one doesn't give me any crazy flashback The 
The Too Faced one is a little bit more white, I will tell you that. Whereas the collab one is a little bit more of a natural color. I mean, it's brightening, but it's not like, I don't know if you can really tell, but the Too Faced one has a little bit more of a white tint to it. All right, so I always like to set my face, like my cheeks and stuff, because if I don't, I feel like my blush, my bronzer, and everything will just look super blotchy. So one of my favorite powders, this is Sephora Micro Smooth Powder. This is amazing. And a really good alternative is the Wet n Wild Photo Focus Press Powder. And in the Sephora one, I'm in the shade Claire Light 15. And the Wet n Wild one, I'm in the shade Warm Light, because I'm like literally pale as a ghost right now. So I'm going to just go ahead and just take a little bit of this and just set my face. I'm using the Wet n Wild one with a P70 brush. And I literally just do a little bit of that, like a dusting, and then I'm gonna use this Ollie and Olivia flat brush from TJ Maxx just to set the rest of my face on the other side. Okay, for bronzer, I've been loving the Tarte Park Ave Princess Palette. I don't know what it is about this, but it is amazing, and it smells like chocolate. Kind of smells like Too Faced products, but this is an amazing contouring palette. And I found the Makeup Revolution Ultra Contour Palette to be a really good alternative. I really like this palette. I think the colors are really nice. I love how they blend and they layer, and they're super pigmented. So this is a really nice little palette as well and you also get two highlighters so it's kind of like a bonus and um, I really like it so I'm gonna just start off by bronzing the skin first and on the drugstore side I'm gonna use one of my favorite brushes if I could find it one of my favorite drugstore brushes for bronzing the skin is the elf pointed powder brush it's literally a pointed powder brush and what I'm gonna do is just pick up the two shades right in here and I'm going to kind of mix the two, tap off the excess and then just start bronzing the skin. I love these shades. They're so warm on the skin so they add like the perfect amount of color. Then for the other side to bronze I'm using a Morphe R2 brush and I just pretty much dip into like all of them and tap off the excess. All right, to contour on the drugstore side, I'm gonna be using a Morphe R10 brush. Using the same colors, I'm pretty much just going to really concentrate the product right where like my hairline is. I'm gonna use an LA Girl 107 brush. It's pretty much honestly the same exact thing, except it doesn't have white haired brushes. Do you see that? I'm obsessed with like both of the colors. Alright, then to just clean up this contour, I'm going to use a Wet n Wild P65 brush. And I'm going to just take the banana color right in here. And this brush is a little bit bigger. I don't have another brush like that that's like really clean right now. So I'm going to just use this one from Violet Voss. And I'm going to take the light shades from the Park Ave Princess palette. Mainly the banana color, that's my favorite one. For blush, my all-time favorite high-end blush is this one from Anastasia. It's in the shade Peachy Love. It comes with three blushes, and I pretty much just mix all of them when I apply it to my cheeks because it creates the perfect peach color. So it comes with Nectarine, Ginger, and Miami, and I love this trio. It is incredible. I use this pretty much all year round, summer, winter, fall. It's a great blush. So a really good alternative is this ColourPop palette, and it doesn't even have a name on it, which I think is kind of weird. I'll leave the name of it down below, but it just looks like this it comes with literally an identical blush color to that like I feel like if you mix all of these colors together it creates this shade in the ColourPop one like this is one of the best alternatives that I found to this exact trio from Anastasia and it comes with a little highlighter so typically I'll just mix um, both of these in the ColourPop one and I, I love this little duo it's amazing so I'm just gonna take this with a stippling brush from TJ Maxx you can see how pretty that is. It just gives you a really light wash of color. It's not too over the top, but it still gives you like that peachy shade, which I love. And then for the high-end side, I'm gonna use a Wet n Wild stippling brush. And like I mentioned, I literally just take my brush and just swirl it in here. 
Then for highlighter, one of my all-time favorite palettes is another Anastasia product. I didn't realize how much Anastasia I have in today's video, but the Anastasia Glow Kit in That Glow is one of my go-tos, especially in the summer because obviously it's like bronzy, beautiful, warm shades. So my favorite colors are the three shades. The one really dark bronzer color, I prefer it when I'm tan, not so much now. So I usually will mix the shade Sunburst, Bubbly, and Dripping in Gold. And a really affordable option that I found Obviously, it's not like the same concept, but when you apply this, it reminds me so much of that Anastasia one. It's this Wet n Wild Rainbow Highlighter in the shade Bronze Over the Rainbow. It is literally so similar, like the color scheme. It's beautiful. This is a, such a beautiful, smooth highlighter. Wet n Wild is really known for their amazing highlighters because they're so smooth and they're not glittery. They are just perfection on the skin. So I'm going to just apply the Wet n Wild one using a Morphe M510 and pretty much how I do this is I just mix my brush into all of the shades and you can keep this really subtle or you can build it up which is why I love this highlighter. Then for the other side I'm using a Morphe M501 and I'm going to just mix the three shades in here. I don't really go too ham with the highlighter. I think I want to do more. I'm going to spray my brush. Bam. Oh you see when you spray the brush so I dipped my brush into the Wet n Wild highlighter and then sprayed it. Ooh. All right, and then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other side. Honestly, I feel like the Wet n Wild one is more intense, which is crazy. Now what I'm gonna do um, is just go ahead and finish up my lower lash line. I don't even wanna know how long this video is, you guys. This is ridiculous. So I'm basically gonna use the same colors that I used in my crease on my lower lashes. All right, so picking up the orange color right in here, as well as this like reddish brick color, I'm gonna take a definer brush and I'm gonna really pack this on my lower lash line. Cleaning off that brush because I love it so much. I need to get another one actually. I'm going to take the shade Railgar and Red Ochre. I like to do it pretty low because it covers up those little tiny creases that I get underneath my eyes. I forgot to mention another really good highlighting palette at the drugstore is this Wet n Wild Mega Glow Highlighting Palette. If you want a really good alternative to the Anastasia um, palettes, which I know they're $40, this is a really great one. I love it so much. And obviously the color scheme is different than the Anastasia one, but again, if you just want a good highlighting palette, this one is awesome and it's only 15 bucks. So I love this one. I'm actually gonna use this highlighter right in this palette, the Wet n Wild one, just to highlight my inner tear duct because the Wet n Wild palette doesn't have like a sparkly sort of a white creamy color. The one that I used on my lid is a little bit more gold and I wanna do a little inner corner highlight so I wanna use something different. And apply it right in the inner tear duct of my eye. All right, and then for the other high end side, I'm gonna use the shade Vermeer in the Anastasia palette. Uh, it's actually not as white as I want it to be. I'm gonna have to add a little bit of the Wet n Wild one just to make it look more similar. So for the lips, I have a liquid lipstick from Too Faced. This is the Melted Matte Liquid Lip, and I have this one in the shade Cool Girl. These are really, really great liquid lipsticks if you've never tried them. Super lightweight on the lips. They don't dry. They're not cakey. They are just super long-wearing and amazing. So this is great, and a really great alternative like color and formula that I found is the Koki Cosmetics Kissable Liquid Lipstick, and I have this one in the shade Nirvana. Um, the color is slightly different, but the it's very, very similar at the same time. So love these. You can get this brand at Walmart. And this one is the Koki one, of course. So you see the color is a little lighter. But they're both like that cool tone kind of mauve tone, which I personally love. I love both shades. I mean, yes, the tone is different, but this is like the closest color that I have found and the formula is like on point. All right, last but certainly not least, setting sprays. So I have this Too Faced Matte Setting Spray. I know a lot of people don't really like this setting spray. Um, I've heard like it gives, it leaves your face looking blotchy and stuff. I've never had any issues with it. Um, I just think that it's, I just feel like there's other really great alternatives to it. It's not my absolute favorite. It's just one of the higher end ones that I currently have on hand. So a dupe that I found for it is the Wet n Wild Matte Finish Setting Spray. I love this. I barely have any left. My nozzle 
doesn't even like barely work that well anymore but this is a really awesome drugstore setting spray next to the milani make it last this is great and it leaves my makeup on like all day and it makes me not have to touch up constantly whenever i spray this i feel like i don't have to touch up as frequently so love this i'm gonna just spray the drugstore side with this and the nozzle is like you'll see The nozzle is like literally broken <laughs> but I still use it because I love it I barely have any left by the way also so use the Too Faced one all right guys so that completes this video let me know what you guys think I know that there's a couple of things that are a little bit different as far as like the colors of things go but like formula wise and just like the longevity of these products because I have tried them before I feel like these are spot on and these are really great alternatives if you don't want to spend all the money on some high-end makeup so let me know what you guys think I know you're the ultimate critic so leave me a comment down below and also feel free to leave me more dupes that you guys have for some popular high-end makeup that way we can all help each other out because we all like to save money. Thank you all so much for watching. I really hope you liked it and I'll see you in a few days in my next one. Bye!